Hello there, I'm Ashley Daigle, and this is Advice from the Cheerbrarian. Each week, I share pep talks in your ear holes for your mind, body, and soul. In this first ever episode, I'm going to lay the foundation of what is to come. I'll explain what the heck Cheerbrarian means, because it's a word that I made up. And I will also establish my cred as a podcaster. I know from my time teaching public speaking at Boy Scout camp, as you do, that as a public speaker, you have to establish your authority. So we're going to get that done today. Once that's settled, I'm going to move into the first of my two segments. Segment one is going to be unsolicited advice because this is an advice podcast and it's vaguely solicited because like you're listening, but I didn't ask you about what you wanted to hear. I just decided, hence unsolicited. And then the second unrequired reading where I will talk about a book that is related to the advice that I've given. The other idea I had for the name of that segment was to read or not to read, but I thought that was terrible. So we're going to go with unrequired reading. Any hoodle, you ready? Let's do this thing. So what and who is the Cherberian, which again, is a word I made up by shoving other words together because I felt like it. So let's break it down. Um, you got the word cheer and brarian. So cheer. Do I have any actual cheerleading experience? Um, definitely no. In high school, I was in the band and I would say I displayed like negative amounts of athleticism. So not, not a thing that I did, but I am well known for having a cheery disposition and like an impossible amount of energy shoved into a five foot frame. One of my friends said, if I was as big as I thought I was, everyone would be in trouble. So there's a lot going on, a lot of energy here. Um, it's been suggested that I should contract myself out with wedding DJs to show up and be like a package deal where like the DJ does the DJing and then I get on the dance floor because I'm always ready to go. I will do an air guitar. I've got a good knee slide. I do a good runway walk. Best to like a like a Beyonce, maybe single ladies. Um, but there is nothing I won't do to make sure others have a good time. In fact, and this is going to sound like a thing I orchestrated for this podcast I'm doing right now, but literally yesterday I went to a brewery for my run club formal, you know, like you do, and there was a live band and they had several unattended tambourines and I did my thing. A lot of tambourine work, a lot of circling around, like not your standard tambourine. Imagine what you think a person looks like playing the tambourine. That is not, not what I did. But the stranger in that brewery came up and said, I love your energy. And then I said, great. I just launched a podcast and then I got them to follow me. So if you're listening, thank you. You made my day. But to sum up, that is what I'm talking about when it comes to cheer. I'm talking about bringing energy. I'm talking about just bringing good vibes and making you feel good. So what I mean by cheerleading is the act of supporting people with affirmation and empathy and that unflappable energy. So cheering experience, check. Now we will move on to Brarian. Am I a trained librarian? Also, no, I am not. I consider myself an amateur librarian because I have always been a champion for books and a voracious reader. And I mean, I did just use the word voracious, so that's, that's pretty good, right? But I've got some anecdotes to sell you on this point too. So two from high school. Uh, first one is when I was a senior, which was not that recently, but that's fine. Um, I remember sitting in English class and my teacher, Mrs. Gobert, said, has anyone read? And she named a book, which I don't remember what the book was because high school was, like I said, it was a minute ago. I don't need to tell you how long ago because we're just getting to know each other here. But I'll just say I experienced the 1990s like the first time around. Okay. So anyway, she said, has anyone read this book? And I watched as 23 pairs of eyes slowly turned to look at me because she knew and everybody else knew if anybody had read that book in the room, it was going to be me. My second 
high school reading anecdote is that we had to read Huck Finn um, at some point in school and my best friend had not done the required reading. He didn't get around to it. I had obviously taken copious notes, obviously, and I gave him said notes and he did great on the quiz. In fact, he did better than I did. And the good news is, is that I am not still bitter about it and I've completely gotten over it. So we don't need to say anything else about that. Zooming ahead to Ashley Daigle adult, uh, reading is one of my most fulfilling hobbies. I studied English in college and I have a goal to read about 52 books a year. And I've, that's been my goal for like five-ish, ten-ish years now. I don't always hit it, but that is what I try to do. So books and me, BFFs, love books. So I feel like we can say Berarian, also check, right? Got that, got that cred demonstrated. Um, so dear listener, why have I made this podcast? Because I want you to feel less alone in this big, scary world. And I want to give you an opportunity in 20 minutes or less to learn something, to laugh, hopefully a lot, and to be empowered. Because, you know, you are choosing to spend some of your precious time with me. And damn it, I am going to use it wisely. That is my guarantee. I am going to encourage you along a path of self-discovery. And on that path, we will be talking about books. I am going to encourage you along a path of self-discovery. And for me, the path to self-discovery is paved with good books. Though not like literally paved, because I would never like use a book as a walkway, but more of like a metaphorical paving. You get it. Um, because like when I am in need, I turn to books. I use books to escape from problems. I use books to give me information to figure out how to solve my problems. Um, so at the end of each episode, like I said, I'm going to recommend a book or two related to the topics that I've covered in the episode. And I'm really excited to do that with you. Um, so I also want to take a minute and talk to you about what experience I have as a podcaster. So I have been a guest on not one, not two, but three different podcasts. I know, I know. So um, one of those was a podcast about the excellent TV show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I talked about an episode called Zeppo starring, I mean, not just starring, but like highlighting the character of Xander. Um, another podcast was the nationally syndicated Away With Words, which is a call-in podcast where you call in and you ask them about a word or phrase that you don't know what it means. So it's something like, you know, my great grandpa used to say this phrase and nobody in the family knows why. And then these people are like, well, we researched and looked into it and based on the region and dialect, yada, yada, yada. So I called in about the word pilade, which we can talk about later. I'll save that for another episode. The third podcast was for my gym and I talked about working out. Um, also, I will highlight another experience I have that is relevant. I was once on a Thanksgiving like discussion video call with Chrissy Teigen where I got to ask her a question and there were some technical difficulties and they had to pause it, but like we could hear, I could still hear her audio and she said, are we going to get her back because she was adorable. So in conclusion, been on three podcasts, Chrissy Teigen said I was adorable. So as a woman, I'm like, is that enough experience to have my own podcast? But if I try to harness like the confidence of a mediocre white man, it's like I almost have too much experience, right? So like you're in very capable hands and I'm glad to be here with you. So I am obviously doing this podcast for you, dear listener, but I'm also doing this podcast for me because it is so much easier to give advice than take it. So part of this podcast is in my aim of giving you the mostest, bestest advice that I have. I am hoping at the same time that some of it will seep into my own practices because we are on this journey together. I see this podcast as another step on my own journey. My CISA, now I could have looked this word up, 
but I always, Sis, Sisyphean, Sisyphean, what do we think, Sisyphean, Sisyphean, um, Sisyphus, y'all, the guy in Greek mythology who was, like, damned to push a rock up a hill for all eternity, that is what I see the quest for happiness to be. It is unrelenting by design to try to better yourself and make yourself happy. So on that incredibly hopeful note, um, so, let's... so the name of this episode is New Year, Same Me, New Podcast, because I want to spend some time talking about New Year. It is February, but it's still new enough to me, and I'm not going to be the one to tell you that, like, you can't you can't, you know, revise your resolutions or start a new whenever you want. Like, personally, I like a New Year vibe. I like, you know, January 1, trying to set some goals, maybe make some changes. But I don't think you have to be that stringent with it. And clearly, because I'm sitting here in February talking about the New Year. And I want to encourage you, like, let's not start the New Year off with a bang. What about if we started the New Year with a maraca? with a little shimmy shake to motivate you. Just a little something to mix it up a bit. That's what we're talking about today. So, how can you start this new, still new, I said so, still new year more gently? So, my advice today is to embrace bare minimum Mondays. So, this term was coined by TikToker Marissa Jo Mays, and she had realized, you know, she was in a period of burnout, in her career and took stock of things and said she wanted to do things a little different. So bare minimum Mondays means on a Monday, she spends more time being creative. She doesn't dive full into that to-do list. She waits until maybe 10 a.m. to even check email and have meetings. It's a gentle way to enter the week. For me, I have, as my therapist has said, perfectionist tendencies, which I think is what you say to a perfectionist so as not to label them a perfectionist. <laughs> Um, but it's really easy Monday to be like, all right, new week, fresh week, going to get that to-do list, going to do everything, going to be amazing. Guess what? You're not going to do everything because you can't do everything in one day. And so if you over-coordinate and over-scheme your Monday, well, then you just sort of let yourself down. Your expectations are too high. And then maybe Tuesday, you start off a little lower and the same for Wednesday and so forth. So I have really taken to this bare minimum Monday's idea. And to me, it means Monday does not have to be the most overscheduled, the day where I do everything on the to-do list. It can be a day where I ease into the week and save some energy because, you know, there's other days in the week. It's not just Monday. Also, maybe Mondays doesn't work for you, right? Maybe you have a really busy schedule Mondays. You can't do a bare minimum Monday. Well, guess what? We don't have to stop at Mondays. I came up with a few others. How about tiptoe into Tuesday? Or you could gently wait into Wednesday. I could keep these going. The point is to be intentional about how you schedule your time and how you spend your energy so that you can be sort of most effective, not for just your work, not just, you know, for the hustle for capitalism, but how can you be most effective for yourself? for your own life, for your own mental health, for you. So, bare minimum, 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 that was good. Bare minimum Mondays. Try it out, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, and let me know how it goes, because I want to hear about it. That has been our unsolicited, I should have picked another word, unsolicited advice for today. I could edit that out, I don't think I'm going to. Moving along, we are now going to get into the unrequired reading of today's episode. Welcome to Unrequired Reading, where I am going to tell you about a book that I think you would like, that maybe you should read. You don't have to read it, because I'm not the boss of you. I'm just a person who bought a microphone, but I think you would like this book. So, in keeping with doing the bare minimum, I have a teeny tiny tome, which is so fun to say, I'm going to say it again, teeny tiny tome, to recommend to you. So this book is only 150 pages, and it is called Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by Satoshi Nagasawa. 
So I've already established I read a lot, but maybe you don't, and that is fine. The statistics on how many adults read books after like they finish their whatever formal education, it is very low. So if you don't read, you are in good company with most people, but I'm here to try to inspire you. Um, but listen, this book, like I said, 150 pages, and it just clucks in at five hours on audio, which for a book is pretty short. And let me just take a moment to say, in case some of you were thinking it, audiobooks count, period. Audiobooks count as reading. The end. It is reading with your ears. And it counts. And I will fight anyone who tries to argue. I will not actually fight them because I don't know how to fight. And I don't think I would be good at it. And I don't want to encourage violence. But I would give them a stern talking to and maybe like a, like a finger waggle. So, you heard it here. Back to the book, which is what I was talking about. So in this book, the protagonist, Taka Takako, has fallen into a bout of depression after the absolutely terrible end of a romantic relationship. And she's just like in a room, not going anywhere, not doing anything. And her estranged uncle reaches out to her to move in with him, uh, to move to the village of Jimbocho and help him take care of their family bookshop. I need to take a moment because this is a very important key fact about this book. So Jimbocho is a village that has over like 200 used bookstores in Japan. I need you to know that that is a real, actual place. Right now, on Earth, there's a real village in Japan with 200 bookstores. Wow. Okay. So she moves there. She's not much of a reader. She's still kind of in bed, depressed plagued with indecision, you know, just reliving her mistakes, but she stops, you know, she's able to kind of take stock of things and sees that this small change she's made, this detour that she thought she was taking in her life is really going to change her life. Um, and it's a nice little book and I think you would enjoy it. And again, to reiterate, Jim Bocho's real. Wow. And you know, when I am concerned about the state of the world and humanity, which like is is frequently things like this knowing that jimbocho village is a real place remembering that gives me a sense of peace because like it's not all bad right so yep read a book guess what everybody we've made it that was the first episode i'm so proud of us mostly me but also you because you're still here so what did we do today? Well, I gave you the 411 on why I started this podcast and why you should care. The unsolicited advice of this episode was about embracing bare minimum Mondays and why you should be intentional about how you spend your energy and your time. And the unrequired reading recommended was the itty bitty book, Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. Now, go on, get out of here, move your body, drink some water. Okay, bye. This has been Ashley Daigle with advice from the Cheer Brarian. If you liked what you heard, tell two other human beings you know about it. Also, please, pretty please, remember to subscribe to Advice from the Cheer Brarian in all of your favorite podcast places and visit us at cheerbrarian.com and on all of the social media that you can stand. I'm on the TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook.